Well, is it good afternoon <laughs> to everyone? Um, what, uh, what we've been hearing uh, this weekend, last night with Alan, and then uh, this, this morning, you know, with Paul, it uh, really spoke to me. It was really powerful, uh, especially about the Lord uh, talking to us. And Paul used the word conviction, and that was uh, a word that uh, really resonated with me because I had an experience uh, a few weeks ago. I was visiting a church, and uh, there was a, um, uh, the pastor gave a uh, uh, request that there was this family, the husband was unemployed, and they uh, couldn't pay their rent. So they were facing, uh, uh, you know, a problem there. And the Lord spoke to me through conviction and basically said to me that I had to give them $100. Now, I got the impression that I had to do it. You know, it wasn't uh, an option, that I could not leave that church without giving them $100. And there's no way I could have really resisted. So to me, that kind of encapsulates what, uh, you know, we heard last night and what we heard, you know, just now. But moving on to, uh, you know, the reason for the conference, we're going to be looking at a <clears throat> something called energy healing. And there's two things about energy healing that uh, I want to bring out. One is that it's very pervasive. This is not just some obscure thing that you would have uh, a hard time uh, running up against. This is something that you could uh, encounter uh, all over. This is very popular all over the world, uh, especially in uh, continental Europe. We're going to get to that in a bit, but um, Germany has huge, over a million energy healers in Germany, and the epicenter for energy healing in Europe is Holland. Uh, this, this was sweeping through Holland 25 years ago. I remember in Portland, in the area, the area where I live, that there was a uh, man from Belgium, and he was addressing, he was a New Ager, and he was from Belgium, and he was saying that in Holland, uh, this was a, uh, actually a social phenomenon that, you know, it was just uh, becoming uh, widespread all over Holland, and that was 25 years ago. So, so Europe is very open to this, and uh, it was a gentleman back there in the green, striped green shirt that was telling me that uh, even in the uh, YMCA that there was uh, this going on. And that's the second thing I want to bring out, that this is not something you find in a religious uh, connotation. For the most part, you will find energy healing in a secular uh, environment. Um, very much, uh, it's very much being touted as for health and well-being rather than religion. But we're going to look at some of the basics of it right now. Uh, there's the Encyclopedia of Energy Medicine. And in it, there are 65 different methods there are 65 different types of energy healing. I should explain what energy healing is, right? <laughs> okay, energy healing is, as you can see there, that uh, the man there is not touching the woman. You know, there's no, it's not massage, it's not physical. In energy healing, they either hold their hands just above you, and sometimes, you know, out, way out here, or lightly on your body, and this energy, this felt uh, energy flows from you into uh, from them into you, so it's like a transfer. You are they are like the a hose, and you are the recipient. And this spiritual energy flows into the person that's receiving it. And what makes this um, controversial to people such as ourselves is that, as we saw last night that all energy healing is based on the chakras. That is something that is inseparable. There is no energy healing without the chakras. And this was used for uh, the one on yoga yesterday. And I'll read it again in the context of energy healing. The seventh functions like a battery charger, renewing our connection with spirit. And that would be, you know, spirit, the spirit world. Beings on other planes are eager to communicate with you. Remember I read that yesterday? if you're willing to be receptive to them. So I believe that things like yoga 
kind of uh, open the way for energy healing, that they're very much related because they're based on the same thing. And there we have the chakra system again. This is done in altered states of consciousness, you know, through mantra or focusing on the breath or in rate. And what we're going to get to pretty soon, it's done through initiation. You don't need, you know, you go to a master and they initiate you. This is not something you learn, like learning uh, chiropractic or learning, uh, you know, mathematics, whatever. You're initiated into this. And there's a, the chakra system. Okay, one of the most prominent ones, the one that's most likely you'd run into, is something, something called uh, Reiki. Now that's a, how many of you have ever heard of Reiki or know anything? Oh, practically everybody. Okay. Yeah, Reiki is a Japanese word, and the first part, the R-E-I, means uh, basically spiritual, and it has other connotations that we'll get to pretty soon, and the K-I means energy, so in Japanese, the word Reiki means spiritual energy. Now, here in the West, they will tell you that it means universal life energy. Now, that sounds kind of uh, innocent, right? Universal life energy, uh, but in Japan, it has a much more... Uh, um, different connotation. This is the gentleman that, uh, uh, I don't want to say invented Reiki, but he's the one that popularized it. Uh, he was a uh, Japanese gentleman, as you can see, and he went up on a hill, a sacred hill, a mountain in Japan, to Buddha, sacred to Buddhism, and he meditated for long periods of time, and according to his account, he got hit right here in the third eye chakra with this energy. It just went into him, and then when he came down off the mountain, he had the ability to quote unquote heal. So originally it was just found in Japan. And then in the 1970s, one of uh, the masters, you know, that had learned this, came to um, the U.S. and initiated 22 masters. See, uh, you have to go to a Reiki master to be initiated. And so out of 22 masters, it is spread all over the world, just out of 22. Okay, the essence of Reiki. This is where it gets kind of uh, scary. Uh, again, you know, the Japanese meaning of Reiki is uh, a cult. Actually, it is. According to the Reiki News Magazine in 2003, in Japanese, the term Reiki is one of the generic words for the occult or hidden spiritual knowledge. So in Japan, it uh, has a much more... Uh, what we would call sinister, from our perspective, a sinister uh, meaning. Okay, this is from, uh, these are all from pro-Reiki sources. I'm, I'm not quoting anybody who's against Reiki. These are all their, this is all their own material. This is from, uh, I think it's skipped again, the Everything Reiki book. And this, this was written by a Reiki master. During the Reiki attunement process, the avenue that is open within the body to allow Reiki to flow through also opens up the psychic communication centers. This is why many Reiki practitioners report having verbalized, did you get that? Verbalized channel communications with the spirit world. With the spirit world. So Reiki definitely is not something that is neutral when it comes to you know, religious uh, uh, connotations. Here's a, a, a book called Essential, Reiki by Diane Stein. She says, the Reiki guides or a group of discarnate, that means non-physical, healers that take part in every Reiki healing. Did you get that? Every Reiki healing. The Reiki one practitioner is probably not aware of them, and that's what most Reiki people are, is level one. But with Reiki two, they begin to make themselves known. In Reiki three, they are running the whole show. And that's the master level. This is a book, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a magazine, the Reiki News Magazine. And it says, during every Reiki ceremony, I am always aware of the presence of my Reiki guides. Every Reiki ceremony. And if you can see on the new, you know, teaching Reiki to children. You see that? And there, that, that's how it is. See, the guy there is in an a altered state of consciousness. And he's channeling uh, Reiki energy into the woman on the um, mat there or whatever. Um, but yeah, teaching Reiki to children, you, you, can, you can initiate anybody into it. Okay, this is, uh, this is really creepy. 
This is uh, Reiki Master. And doesn't she look nice? I mean, she doesn't look like, uh, you know, someone who's uh, in touch with spirit guides, right? She looks like some kind of a Sunday school teacher, right? Well, she's a Reiki Master in my, you know, 50 miles from where I live. And she says, I work with as many as 20 spirit guides during my Reiki treatments. They are my spiritual family. Many Reiki practitioners can feel the presence of their Reiki guides. So in essence, Reiki is very much connected with, you know, spirit guides or what the Bible calls familiar spirits. But, you know, they are my spiritual family. This is uh, um, Diane Stein again. She says, Reiki once belonged to everyone. The Reiki guides want it to be so again. And this is what I'm trying to get across. This is... The Reiki guides, you know, want it to belong to everyone. You know, this is there's an agenda here. There's a uh, there's an effort. There's a uh, a plan. There's a uh, strategy that this is going to be something that the whole world is going to be connected to. Uh, the, a Google search for Reiki yields about 58 million results. 58 million. Reiki is huge. Reiki is enormously popular around the world you know I mean it's in in Portland there I met a guy from uh, Tanz Tanzania and he was a Reiki master so Reiki is you know not only in uh, places like Europe and North America but it's also very much uh, evident throughout uh, you know the third what's called the third world this is a, a good example of what I'm talking about this is a Reiki master she uh, she lived in the Czech Republic for 13 years and during that time, she uh, initiated 45,000 people worldwide into Reiki. 43,000 of them were in Europe. So she just traveled around Europe, uh, not doing it on people, but initiating them. In other words, she created Reiki channelers, 45,000. And like I said, most of them were in Europe. She just went to all the you know, neighboring countries. She most likely came to the United Kingdom. But uh, just one person was able to produce 45,000 Reiki channelers. So you can see that one, one Reiki master can have an enormous effect. So all these 45,000 people that she initiated would go out and start doing it on others. And like I said, Reiki is not like a religion. It's not like uh, there's a, uh, it's not like a church where you have to go and hear sermons. These 45,000 people would not have to have any contact with uh, Marie Hall after that. You know, they would just go out and start doing it on family members, friends, people in the community. According to William Lee Rand, head of the International Center for Reiki Training in 2004, there were at least a million people in the United States who channeled Reiki energy. So in 2004, there were a million. That's quite a few for something like this. See, if there were only like 5,000 or 20,000, then you could accuse me of being a sensationalist, just whipping people up, you know, just for the sake of, you know, creating fear, right? But when you see something like this, a million, million people doing this, and Reiki is something you do on others. It's not, some, it's not like just a personal belief system. The entire goal of Reiki is to go out and, it's, it's like evangelization through um, quote-unquote healing, you know? Okay, this is a good example. This is a book called The Triple Whammy Cure, and this, uh, this uh, David Edelberg is a doctor, and he incorporates uh, Reiki into his practice. And notice the thing, things on the bottom there. Improve your mood, increase your energy, uh, end brain fog, get more sleep, uh, reduce your stress. I mean, who doesn't want that, right? I mean, have you had any of these problems? Well, anyhow, he says that, at, uh, or this is one of his patients, he, he you know, uh, does it on his patients, and they say, after a first session, now that's very important to remember, after a first session, not you know weeks or months or years down the road, but right off the bat, uh, this patient uh, said, I felt, I really felt energy shifting within me. Then all of a sudden, I knew what I had to do with my life. You know, I, had, I knew what I had to do with my life, and that would be, you know, reach others. So there's kind of like an evangelistic effect. <laughs> Uh, Reiki in hospitals, according to the Reiki News Magazine, 800 hospitals in the U.S. 
which are 15% of, of all hospitals, have a Reiki practitioner on staff. So when you go to a hospital, and I've been told that, what's that called, the National Health, uh, yeah, the National National Health Service yeah, has uh, incorporated Reiki channelers into it. So it's, it's a good uh, possibility that you would encounter this within a hospital somewhere. Okay, um, day spas. Are there day spas in Britain? You, you know what a day spa is? That's where you kind of go for the day and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, in the U.S., many, many, many day spas have a Reiki, well, they have massage therapists, and the massage therapists are Reiki channelers. And uh, in a Google search five years ago with the words day spa and Reiki, there were over 138,000 results. Today, there were over 2 million. So there's a, this is why I'm saying it's not a religious thing. You know, there's no such thing as the Church of Reiki. You would go to a day spa, and you would, you know, they would tell you, "Well, this is. Let me do something on you. This is universal life energy, and it can really heal you." Okay, these are some of the uh, celebrities who are involved in Reiki: uh, Nicole Kidman, Uma Thurman, Angelina Jolie, Naomi Watts, Kate Bosworth. Holly Berry, Sandra Bullock, Goldie Hawn, Helen Hunt, and Sharon Stone. These are people that, you know, you can find on the internet who have endorsed Reiki. And uh, one of the major ones is Sandra Bullock. Uh, she is aware of Reiki-infused jewelry by, jewelry by Los Angeles designer and Reiki master Catherine Michaels. So you, you can actually infuse Reiki into inanimate objects, you know, and create talismans. And this supposedly would have an effect on the people that come around you, you know, that, they, this energy would kind of influence them. So uh, Sandra Bullock is, you know, very much involved in, in the Reiki movement. Uh, river dance. How many of you remember something called river dance? Okay, this was the original star of river dance, Michael Flatley. And uh, he says that uh, <clears throat> um, the secret of his success is the Japanese healing therapy, Reiki. And he talks about how Reiki can get me back on the stage just hours after a painful leg injury. He says, it sounds crazy, but the evidence speaks for itself. I start to feel better as soon as a healer touches my injury. And as we saw earlier, this is connected with the spirit world. So it is actually you know, a familiar spirit that's impacting him. Uh, Reiki in the Holy Land, this, this is very interesting. Uh, in 2003, there were 5,000 Reiki practitioners in Israel including 100 teaching masters. Now these teaching masters, if each one teaches or um, initiates uh, uh, 10 people a year, that would be 1,000 a year. So by now it would be close to including, uh, um, you know, the ones we already see there, there would be 15, 20,000 or so Reiki channelers in Israel now. Now Israel is a very small country, you know, it's not really a, a large place. So if you get 15, 20,000 Reiki channelers in Israel, and each one does it on you know, 10, 15, 20 people, you could get hundreds of thousands of people that are being impacted by it. Um, how many recognize this, this person? Okay, this is Dr. Oz. Now, is, he, is, he, uh, is his show shown in the UK? Okay, well, I thought it was. And, well, the, uh, any, <laughs> anyhow, uh, this, uh, this is Dr. Oz. He initially was on the Oprah Winfrey show, and uh, he's a doctor, uh, um, a cardiologist, and a surgeon in New York. Very influential. You, I thought I saw that he, his show was uh, on uh, British television. Oh, cable. Okay, cable. Okay, cable. So uh, he has his own show in the U.S. now, U.S. and Canada. And a lot of people like him. He's very influential, and a lot of what he says is good. He talks about nutrition. He talks about uh, you know vitamins and exercise and you know and things that I believe in. But he is also into uh, into Reiki. Uh, in uh, in 2010, he said that uh, uh, alternative medicine secrets for 2010 included. Uh, um, you know, he ranked Reiki number one. He, Dr. Oz said, Reiki is one of my favorites. We've been using it for years in the Oz family, and we swear by it. Okay, we swear by it. Now, where has it led him? And uh, this, this is quite fascinating. Where has Reiki led him? Well, 
This is a book called The Instruction, Living the Life Your Soul Intended. Uh, now, isn't this a Scottish name? Ainsley MacLeod. It doesn't get more Scottish than that, does it? <laughs> Ainsley MacLeod. Well, he is a psychic, and uh, he lives in Seattle, Washington. Even though he's from Scotland, he lives in Seattle, Washington. And he uh, channeled this book called The Instruction. And we're going to see, uh, you know, what, uh, what it's all about. Uh, first, we'll read the bottom part. Have you ever sensed that your life has a deeper, more meaningful purpose, but don't know what it is? If so, you're not alone. To help you and the millions like you, Psychic Ainsley McLeod Spirit Guides have given him a systematic approach to uncovering who you really are and the life your soul has planned for you. So this is definitely, you know, what the Bible calls doctrines of demons. You know, who you really are, that's God. You know, that you are God. All, you know, everybody out there is God. Well, Reiki has led Dr. Oz into accepting this philosophy. Dr. Oz says, I, I recommend this book to those who seek greater spiritual well-being and a better understanding of their life's purpose. So when a, a very influential uh, person on, on television is promoting you know, Reiki to all the millions who watch him, and this is where it's going to lead them, you know, to people like Ainsley McLeod you know, psychics. And that's uh, Dr. Oz's wife, Lisa. And in that book, she says, I am a certified Reiki master. And this is, this is, uh, from my perspective, this is, this is quite uh, unsettling. This is uh, uh, a, a doctor in Kentucky sent this to me. Um, this is, sked this is promoted or um, presented by the, uh, let me see, where there's a, yeah, let me see, there's a uh, Franklin County Board of Education. So this is a uh, governmental organization. This isn't somebody just renting a, a space. And also somewhere here, it's the, uh, where is it? There's a, uh, the state, the state uh, uh, Board of Education, the county and the state, I don't know. But anyhow, uh, uh, in Reiki initiations, in a local high school in, in Frankfurt. Now, this is the Bible Belt, folks. How many of you have heard of the Bible Belt? You know, this is supposed to be a really conservative Christian area of the United States. And yet, uh, the county, and somewhere there it says, uh, oh, yeah, uh, uh, Kentucky Department of Education. You'll get that? Kentucky Department of Education. So we have the county and the state government uh, officially uh, endorsing. Um, Reiki initiations in uh, the local high school. And this is real, to me, this is a very disturbing trend considering the nature of Reiki. Okay, Northern Canada. Northern Canada, this is Peace River, Alberta, which is way out in the middle of the boondocks in, uh, in Canada, in Brit or, uh, uh, Alberta. Now, you would never expect to find anything alternative or counterculture in uh, Peace River, but yet there's a Reiki center there. And um, it says there, I decided, I decided it was time for a change, so I made it. How about you? you know? Now, if that was you know, even in Edmonton or Calgary, uh, it wouldn't be surprising, but when it's in Peace River, you know, that is really a remote place. And speaking of Alberta, <clears throat> I was in uh, Calgary, uh, which is one of the major cities in Alberta. And there was a woman there who had uh, been a Reiki uh, Chandler and she became a Christian and she, you know, repented and got out of it. So it does happen. But she told me there were thousands upon thousands of Reiki Chandlers in uh, Calgary and that they were very popular. Thousands upon thousands. Okay, other types of energy healing. Reiki is the most predominant one, but there are other types. This is... Uh, Barbara Ann Brennan has uh, something called the, the Brennan Method of Energy Healing. And this is her book, Hands of Light. And she, um, she has two schools. One is, uh, I think, in Florida, and one is in Europe, in Austria or somewhere. Anyhow, she, uh, she has trained thousands of people in uh, energy healing. Now, have you heard that saying, one picture is worth a thousand words? Have you all heard that? Say, what I'm, what I'm about to show you is... The, the total fulfillment of that saying. And I think you'll uh, know what I mean when I show it to you. This is, that book has sold 1.2 million copies. 
book is very, very popular. So I'm going to show you a picture from that book. So what you have there is, you know, the uh, practitioner, and on both sides you have what are called the guides, or beings of light. So that shows where the energy is coming from. And in the book it says, enlightenment is the goal, healing is a byproduct. So it's not really about healing, it's about by enlightenment, that means you're God, you know that you're God. Well, there are other, uh, other types. This is very popular with nurses. Uh, it's called therapeutic touch, and it was developed by this woman, Dolores Krieger, in the early 70s. See, all, I want to make a point here. All this has just come about since the 1970s. This was virtually unheard of in the Western world before then. Even in the 60s, it was all uh, therapeutic touch was developed in 1972. Um, Reiki came to the West in the late 70s, and these other things you're going to see, these are all recent uh, developments. This is not something that has always been around, and that's one of the things that I want to emphasize. That's why it's important to know what's going on. Anyhow, Dolores Krieger says that uh, therapeutic touch reveals it has a high occult factor. This is from the horse's mouth, a high occult factor, because it's based on the chakras. Therapeutic touch, all energy healing is based on the chakras, and the chakras is based on beings on other planes who want to connect with you. Uh, a Google search for therapeutic touch reveal, reveals 653,000 results. Okay, uh, Here's another one, quantum touch, that's very popular, uh, 641,000 results. Here's the gentleman that uh, developed something called quantum touch, and again, that's all over the world. And it's not as big as Reiki, but it is found in the UK. Um, Richard Gordon, a highly experienced energy healer and founder of Quantum Touch, a global health institution, with 35 years of experience, Richard Gordon is considered a visionary and pioneer in the field of energy healing. Mr. Gordon is the best-selling author of Quantum Touch, The Power to Heal, now in 17 languages. But the thing is, in the book, he reveals that he got it from a spirit guide. Okay, Richard Gordon reveals uh, he learned about the chakras from Lazarus. Now, Lazarus is a uh, familiar spirit that is channeled through uh, um, a medium named Jack Purcell. Okay, Lazarus uh, has blendings with people. When you, uh, when you go to his, uh, uh, whatever you call them, uh, there are blendings you have with him. And this is where quantum touch comes from. Okay, this is quite interesting, the oneness blessing. The oneness blessing, and again, you know, this picture kind of says it all. Now, do you see there's a whole line of statues of Buddha there? Okay, what this is saying is, those were all people, used to be people. There used to be a line of humans, and there's someone with the oneness blessing going down the line and turning humans into Buddhas. In other words, enlightening them. And see, the woman there is getting the oneness blessing, and she's going to turn into a, B a Buddha, and then the guy next to her sees, oh boy, I'm next. You know, I can hardly wait. So he's, he's all happy. He's all happy because, you know, he's going to get turned into a Buddha. Now, the oneness blessing, again, is all over the world. 129 oneness blessing uh, givers in London. 129. Now, that may seem not, like not very many, but according to uh, the people that do the oneness blessing, it's much more quicker than Reiki. The, Reiki takes like an hour or two to do on you, where the oneness blessing, you can be enlightened in two minutes. <laughs> so there's people that uh, usually when somebody does the oneness blessing, like scores or, you know, a lot of people show up and then they just do this. They, two minutes and then you're possessed. You know, two minutes. So 100, 129 uh, oneness blessing givers in London could do it on like 15, 20,000 people a year. Because usually they congregate, you know, in, in one specific place because they know it doesn't take very long. But again, you know, this is uh, over, a, over a period of time, you know, the number of people being influenced like this could, just by the oneness blessing, could be in the tens of thousands. And then they would talk to their friends and relatives and co-workers and say, you know, I, I got the oneness blessing, and then they'd be interested. So it's like a ripple effect. And the thing is, again, it's not presented as religion. 
It's presented as therapeutic. Now this term oneness is God is everything, all is one, that we saw yesterday. One of the major promoters of uh, the oneness blessing is Tony Robbins. He's a very popular self-help author and guru. Uh, millions of people have experienced it. Many thousands the world over are flocking to India to learn how to administer it. And celebrities, from movie actors to high-tech executives to self-help gurus, such as Tony Robbins, are swearing by it. It's called Diksha. Well, that's the Hindu word for it. And if you believe its proponents, this new form of spiritual transmission is going to have quite an impact on spirituality in the new millennium. And one of the people that went to uh, his seminar, he, Tony Robbins does it on hundreds of people at one time, literally hundreds at one time. And one of them said, thank you so much for sharing this beautiful experience. I just returned from a Tony Robbins event where the oneness blessing was given twice during the week-long event. I know I want to see this spread across the whole planet for the healing I know we can all enjoy. So, you know, it's, it's not considered something evil or creepy or scary or bad. It's considered like the hope of the world, like this is what the world has been waiting for. Okay, this is um, a woman who uh, is considered one of the top Reiki masters in New York City. Her name is Raven Keys, and she wrote a book called The Healing Power of Reiki. And uh, she, is, uh, she teaches workshops internationally, but she is very popular in New York City. And in her book, The Healing Power of Reiki, uh, Dr. Oz wrote the foreword to it. Again, you know, a very influential person. And uh, in it, she says, we all have a right to connect to our, our spirit guides. It's like a right, you know, you, you have the right to connect to your spirit guides. Every person interested in Reiki can make a personal connection with a guide. This is a spirit, this is a spirit uh, who is the overseer of your Reiki experiences and is invaluable to those of us who practice Reiki. So these spirits are invaluable to people that are Reiki practitioners. Your Reiki master and spirit is a powerful being on whom you can depend. So you can depend on these, on these beings. Uh, so where does this lead to? You know, well, the whole gist of why we're here is that uh, you know, we believe that uh, this is the end of the age, the last days, right? And to me, this is, this is really good evidence that this has happened, that this is the end of the age, and I'm not reading anything into it. There was a teacher in uh, Portland, Oregon, who went to a Reiki uh, Chandler and actually fell under the power of a familiar spirit. And she put out a book called Attuning to Inner Guidance. And I got this book, uh, or booklet, I should say, clear back in the mid-1980s, about 1985. And it's one of the things that motivated me to do this kind of work. And she said, this is under uh, the title of, uh, a subtitle of Listening Deeply Within, the following are wisdoms excerpted from my journal of channelings from my inner teacher. So this isn't her speaking, this is her inner teacher. And uh, this, which is a spirit guide, which is a demon. So this spirit guide, this is, like I said, this is channeled, this isn't her speaking. When the coming together time is here, you'll all, that's humanity, when the coming together time is here, you'll all slip into gear without much resistance to each other. That induction will come as a snap when enough of you are united in spirit. Now that coming together time, I believe, that is when the man of sin comes to power, the son of perdition. And when he comes on the scene, there's going to be this coming together time. And, he's, and the demon says that induction will come in a, in a, as a snap when enough people are united in spirit. In other words, when they have enough people to work with or under their control, when the man of sin makes his appearance, he's going to have this, uh, you know, this uh, vast number of people that will be immediately loyal to him. Okay, uh, there, there's an agenda here. This is the spirit guide speaking to her and then you know, humanity in general. You must be exactly where you are doing exactly what you are doing. We, did you get that? It's important. We cannot stress how vital that is to the overall work that is happening in Portland and everywhere right now. Trust, 
trust. The master will guide, do not have concern, it is all happening. Make inner guidance commonplace, get it out there for the every man. Now keep in mind she's a teacher, you know, she has access to children. Make inner guidance, in other words, what she experienced, commonplace. And then the spirit says, I love you, Storma. Nothing is more important than to be a clear, resonating vessel to channel through the will of the universe. Trust in me, your Lord. So this is why the true Lord brings the tribulation on the world, because you have millions, tens of millions, tens of maybe hundreds of millions of people who now trust in demonic spirits as their Lord. Hundreds of millions. I see this happening. Reiki is spreading all over, you know, the uh, the world. Okay, this is uh, back to Colleen Benelli. Remember, she was the one that uh, said that uh, she had 20 spirit guides, and they were her spiritual family. Remember that? Yeah. Well, this is what she says. Today, people of all religion, religious and spiritual backgrounds practice Reiki. I have had Reiki students from a wide variety of religions. In one class, one Reiki class, just in one class, I had a Muslim, Hindu, Catholic, fundamentalist, Christian, and agnostic. So I want that to kind of sink in because this means that it's not just one type of person. It's a, w a wide variety of people that are interested in this. And that fundamentalist Christian, you know, I wonder if he or she knows that Reiki is connected with, you know, demonic spirits. My students are teachers, psychologists, health, same, this is uh, Colleen Benelli again. My students are teachers, psychologists, healthcare professionals, nurses, doctors, vet veterinarians, massage therapists, horse and dog trainers, yoga teachers, engineers, biologists, firefighters, EMTs, soldiers, corporate executives, moms, dads, kids, you name it. What I have learned from my Reiki classes what I've learned from my Reiki classes, clients and readers, is that we are the mainstream. We are the mainstream. This is no longer something that is obscure or, you know, uh, fringe. This is no longer fringe. We are the mainstream. Okay, the explosion of Reiki. Remember when I first started in, in 2003, there were one million Reiki channelers in the U.S., remember? Okay, in 2011, Presence Magazine, the official magazine of Spiritual Directors International, um, stated that there were now two million Reiki channelers in the United States. So it went from one million in 2004, I'm sorry, I said three, to two million in 2011. And I, would believe, I believe that you would find similar, similar uh, figures in Great Britain because, you know, I wouldn't come over here without... Uh, UK uh, statistics, <laughs> or not statistics, but okay, this is um, from a Reiki channeler here in Britain, I don't know where, but in the early to mid 1990s, Reiki was pretty much an unknown word in the UK. There were few books on Reiki in the major stores and it had yet to be discovered in a meaningful way. From the year 2002, it would be difficult to find a village in the British Isles where there had not, where there are not a number of Reiki practitioners. Now, notice it said village, not town. There had, there has been an enormous proliferation, and it has been written about in all manner of publications, including the national press. So it went from being, you know, hardly known, uh, starting in 2002. He, as he said, it would be difficult to find a village that does not have a number of Reiki practitioners. That means more than one. So, again, getting back to my, the main theme of this conference and my talks, regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled or corrupted by them. I am the Lord your God. So now you know. So if anybody in your, uh, your circle of friends or family members they encounter this, you'll be able to tell them that uh, there's great spiritual danger there. Great spiritual danger. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.